So as the strike pushes on into the holiday season, millions of Canadians will be affected, especially those living in rural or remote communities where Canada Post is the only courier available. This includes our next guest, Mariah Batiste. Mariah is a Mi'kmaq artisan and owner of Sunday Lace Creations. She joins me now from the Eskasoni First Nation in Nova Scotia. Mariah, thank you so much for making the time. Thank you for having me. And hearing the voices of Indigenous uh, business owners. Yes, of course. And as a business owner, how has this postal strike affected your daily operations, your ability to fulfill the orders? It, it has been a real struggle for me. I'm on a First Nations Reserve. Uh, UPS and Pure Later and FedEx are an hour away. Um, it really becomes a uh, inequity in access to those kind of services. Mm -hmm. uh, my community relies heavily on Canada Post. And as my business is growing uh, and the busy season is coming, it really is becoming um, sort of a challenge unexpected right before uh, Black Friday sales. Yeah, going into this, this busy period for sure, Black Friday, the holiday season, can you tell me more about the challenges you're facing in, in managing customer expectations and the communications around this period of disruption? Uh, for me, I'm just building a lot of trust and transparency with my customers, letting them know northern communities that have P.O. boxes don't have access to UPS. Uh, they don't have the civic addresses to for me to use other services, and they're sort of at the mercy of Canada Post, um, whereas others are more uh, urban. They can get those uh, services and are able to get the postal um just for me to ship out in alternate ways, even though it's a huge inconvenience and at cost for me as customers are expecting the shipping rates from Canada Post um, to remain the same across all platforms. And it's not always the case. Yeah. Can you help us, um, especially those of us who live in bigger cities, uh, understand what your community's reliance on Canada Post is like? How important is it? Uh, it's hugely important for me as a commercial seller. I ship out about a thousand uh, parcels uh, every few months. We're doing like a hundred a week, let's say. Uh, and just to have all that much traffic to go out of the store and to drive that into the local uh, city to go and ship those out in multiple places is a huge inconvenience for us and is not exactly um, easy thing for us to do while managing all the other things we're doing. Whereas Canada Post usually comes to our house and picks up the mail because we're a corporate seller. Um, it is a huge inconvenience for us, but also for Northern communities. Uh, I did a cost analysis for one customer to get an advent calendar. It was $20 to ship with Canada Post and $60 to ship wow. with UPS. And so those are the discrepancies where I have to decide as a business owner, do I eat the cost and uh, ship or do I wait it out the, the, the strike and hope that it uh, comes to an end soon so yeah. we can continue uh, as usual. And you've had to make those calculations before. You've dealt with this before with previous shipping disruptions. So knowing all of that, how have you tried to mitigate the impact of this strike on your business? I have uh, prepared myself by getting the UPS account and getting everything set up. I'm using a shipping app that's helping me uh, cross and analyze all the shipping prices. And uh, from here, it's just a matter of learning and retraining my staff on how to ship from different places because we only shipped with uh, Canada Post prior. And so now we're looking at you know, alternative ways to ship to keep our customer happy. But ultimately, we're at the mercy of the customer's patience and um, hoping that any shipping increasing uh, won't be a deterrent as a lot of U.S. Our, uh, companies are able to offer free shipping, which is a lot cheaper. But if you're having to turn to those to those other companies and other couriers, what kind of cost are you looking to incur yourself? Yeah, and that's what we're doing. We're just like in day two or three of shipping with other companies. And uh, I'm keeping a real close look at whether it is too costly to ship or if it's uh, a weighted out situation. And communicating that with my customer to say like, 
those uh, you may have to wait if shipping is sixty dollars, for example. Yeah. Um, versus waiting it out, um, hopefully not long. But we did have the Christmas promotional things that were supposed to be out, and they should be opening those on December first. And so we prioritized those customers first, just to ensure that like customer satisfaction about the advent calendar. Yeah. And everything is in limbo right now, but we know that Canada Post and the union are returning to the bargaining table today with a special mediator that's appointed by the government. What are your hopes as negotiations continue? Honestly, I really would hope that they would give um, access to rural communities and First Nations communities as a priority if they are doing um, a rolling strike to not remove those P.O. boxes as uh, those people really do rely heavily on uh, Canada Post. Uh, for me, I'm in Eskasoni. I'm, I'm, ru I'm rural, but I'm not so rural that a uh, two-hour drive would be such an inconvenience for me. But for others, I think of uh, other beadwork artists who are halting sales, and this is their livelihood. And I really want to advocate for those uh, entrepreneurs out there who are sh selling online and are forced to um, really jump through a fiery hoop right now to think about what they have to do to uh, maintain business. Mariah, thank you so much. Really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. I, I appreciate you thinking of us at Sunday Lace Creations. That's Mariah Batiste, the owner of Sunday Lace Creations.